All right, so first impression, Stephanie. What do you think happens in here? Uh, smoking. Sick <laughs> and laser other, tag. Other things, dude. Um, techno music to like with like a strobe light and then like a fog machine. It still sounds like laser tag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're very close together. <laughs> a rave and laser tag are like one degree apart. Yeah. <laughs> laser tag is just a rave that you can win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My touch feels my my feet touch what feels like bare soil. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like oh. when it's like when you walk into a pizza place that has uh, peanut shells on the floor. <laughs> I with your bare feet because they're weird and don't wear shoes in this universe. I guess they well I know Texas Roadhouse did that. I guess they don't do that anymore because people with peanut allergies couldn't even like step in the door. Yeah. No, that's a, that's like overtly a terrible idea for obvious reasons for an entire subsection of the population. I, sorry, really random. I remembered as I was driving yesterday, I had a flashback that my teacher used to give out, um, like my fifth grade teacher would give us peanuts, like peanuts in the shell. Yeah. If we answered a question right, because it was like instead that of giving like out, a, that seems like it can go wrong. Yeah, I know, right? They would never allow that now. And I never, I didn't like peanuts, so I would just sit there and I'd open up the shells and I can't play, I'd play with the peanuts. can't believe cancel culture came for peanuts. <laughs> he was an old man, so he's like, oh, you get a peanut because you got the answer right. And I would just collect the peanuts because I didn't eat them because I was like, I don't like peanuts. But I just had like, a, I had a bunch of peanuts on my desk and I'd yeah. just play with them. I'm always just like, I'm always so taken aback when somebody's like, I when somebody's like, I, I can't they act like something has been like, essentially like canceled or something by PC culture. But it's like, Hey, this thing would just kill people. <laughs> like, yeah. This thing's just really dangerous. I can't believe anyone cancel who's culture came from my guns. <laughs> the, uh, with a quick check, I realized the floors are wood. With, just laden with a layer of dust, grime, and peanut shells, I actually called it. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> cancel, cancel culture came for asbestos. Imagine how much more upsetting and... Like how much more of a mess this whole thing can be, if uh, if you have any like species specific like allergens and stuff like that or dietary restrictions, like if this was a dogs can't eat chocolate universe. Yeah, dogs can't eat grapes, so the floor if they can't have a floor covered with yeah. grapes. That'd be really bad. I don't this think anything's allergic to peanuts except for people, though. Maybe. But I don't know. I don't there know. I'm sure things. there's something out there. There's plenty of other things. The smell of spilled beer, cigarettes, and sweat is a combination of the likes of which I've never smelt stronger. I turn, and Ryan's only a few feet in front of me, standing in the middle of the room with Casey. They're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that I, was, like, in the corner that was Casey and Ryan, and they don't look like they're fucking. Well, it's a, it's a mood piece. It's a mood piece. Yeah. I mean... That CG where uh, Flynn is fingering Carl shows that before the part where he says that. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair Just, enough. You got it's too many pictures. We can't all be Paint Fox where Arches has like three hundred. <laughs> it's not that many, but it's like it has like over a hundred CGs for a game that's like shorter than that's like. Half as long as at Astro. I just wanted to see the picture of them fucking. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> they, uh, they they made a choice not to have any nudity in all of Echo, except for the standalone game uh, benefits, I believe. So I don't think you're just. I think you're just never going to see I'm that. Just, I'm in, just out of luck. I, I still see what Casey looks like. I'm just very it's, confused. It's just all left for your imagination. I'm interested. That you you're trying to figure out exactly what what makes sense of like androgynous fox character who's like 30s and looks kind of washed out but also is just being a huge slut yeah i'm just i just want to see this character because it's a fascinating character i feel like i've met them at a bar before <laughs> flynn's next to them his shirt open and belt undone whoa, whoa cool. <laughs> i wasn't expecting the light to change that's neat oh look at the bottom right corner <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so there's a lot of people that could be fucking yeah you know. no there's a lot happening right oh now. yeah right to the left of chase that's probably them fucking 
Like there's the dog, and then right next to Chase's other shoulder, there's a crouched over well, there's individual. A, the person in the back is getting a hand job, and the person on the right has like thigh up, and so it's it's up to interpretation exactly what's happening in that moment. But the person on the right is like, sit, boy. <laughs> there's not much interpretation about what's happening in that moment. <laughs> And Flynn's just there in the middle. I had a feeling that, that, I, that I, I'm like the smoke room. Given that my first impression of this place was that there's like back room shit going on somewhere, I'm like, I don't think you smoke. I don't think it's just a room where you smoke. <laughs> I don't think that's the the premise here. <laughs> Even if there are like, I know, I know what a smoke room is in real life, in that there's like. The equivalent, like the uh, like the uh, the outer garden or whatever, in the, the middle of an office building, lounge. where it's like go over there and smoke and so on. But the, uh, I guess it's that uh, my introduction to the phrase "the smoke room" in this universe is the prequel's title, and I think you play a prostitute in that game. I think that's I think that's what Sam is, and so inherently I'm like, oh, does Sam work in the smoke room? Is that what this is about? Is that what the smoke room means? Like, I, I, that sounds about right. I was immediately primed for that innuendo. So when I hear smoke room here, I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Although I, I, I came to the conclusion before they even used the phrase. The lights pulsate on and off at infrequent intervals. Everything goes from pitch black to lit up bright. And of course, there's not a window to be seen. Yeah, you don't want windows <laughs> in a room like this. I hear ambient voices around me. A decent amount of people are here, and most of them are completely naked. Oh, this is a, this is a cool visual going back and forth. This just glowing, it's like some neon demon shit. It, it's just it like a is, glowing square behind is. Flynn, like just drawing you in. Behind Flynn, gay porn plays at a crooked on a crooked mounted television screen that's what's happening back there. oh those are faces on there yeah no I, I caught that I didn't I, I didn't cl I didn't look at what it was specifically speakers and subwoofers rumble with a bassy drone of bizarre music that guy on the bottom right there that's a subwoofer <laughs> 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 that was a good one. <laughs> so starting out strong. Silhouettes of people dance in a limp daze. The flickering lights made the shapes look like ragdolls flailing in stop motion. Oh, the red now. Ooh, this is a really cool effect. The lights begin to strobe red, and it's overbearing the senses. Too much to bear. I grab the end of my tail, squinting through the actual smoke. Flynn? My voice comes out more pathetic than intended. The music's so intense I can't tell if I'm being loud or quiet. Ooh, now it's like a blurry one. I feel like like this scenario reminds me of like feeling like a child. Like when you when you're a kid and you encounter something like kind of uh, adult and yeah. like for the first time and you feel like you shouldn't be there like that kind of weird like yeah I feel like even as an adult now occasionally I'll like be like I feel like a child <laughs> in this place because it'll, it'll something be... intense is happening yeah exa exactly but like you just walk in on things... you just walk in in real life into the ass to ass scene from uh, Record for a Dream <laughs> dude <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I love Jennifer Connelly, but no, not that. <laughs> but like the, uh, no, like, like the, I know stuff like this probably happens. I don't run in circles where I see things like this necessarily. But like a while back, I was I was watching Queer as Folk for the first time, which is very has some problematic aspects to it. But I was like, do people have parties like this where everyone just fucks? Like, does this happen? <laughs> Where are these places? Uh, furry conventions. Yeah. That's yeah. one of them. I think that's an offshoot of other real life stuff that was already happening. I don't think I don't think it's like furries are like, what if orgies? But uh, I've been invited, invited to orgies before, yeah. but not by people I'd want to be in orgies with. So I've never been to an orgy. But, but I'm aware I've, that they I've exist. I've definitely heard some wild thing about room, at room parties. I want like an eyes wide shut party. <laughs> 
I, I want it, but I don't want it because there's a lot of bad things that happened in that movie. I was going to say, I've never seen Eyes Wide Shut, but I think it's more than just an orgy. I, I have the implication that Can some I, kind of like sacrifice or some shit is happening no, there. Not it seems not exactly. good. All right. <laughs> like, I just want an Eyes Wide Shut par- like themed orgy. You just want masks. Yeah, but I want to do want like I want I want a ballroom first with like dancing you want masks and, and, then, and then fucking <laughs> in pretty dresses. Just a music video that explodes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Everything goes black again. I hear a clamp and a cry, followed by a baritone voice. <laughs> this is what you want. Yeah, a clap like. <laughs> Like smacking, like smack, ass smacking. Smack, smack. Is somebody clapping? <laughs> wow, it ha- wow, it happened. Somebody's really excited. <laughs> this is actually somebody clapping. There's just a guy in the corner holding up a test sign that just says 10. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is what I wanted. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Rate My Nut. Uh, <laughs> it's too early in the morning for this. Did Flynn say that? <laughs> There's a glint in the darkness, and I know it's Flynn's eyes. He's not looking at me. His eyes may be aimed in my general direction. He's not actually looking at me. He's pulling an American psycho. (laughs) I'm not actually there. You can can shake my hand, feel the touch of, like, blah, 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 blah. But I'm not really there. I've also not seen American Psycho. No, just read the... Well, don't. I was going to say, just read the book, but also don't do that to yourself. That was a reaction you had. It was a strong pivot. I go down and I... <laughs> sorry, wait, hold on. Uh, phrasing. No. Um, he does. <laughs> uh, no, I. you can quote me time and time again, and I'll go off and off about it. I'm not going to do that right now, but I will tell you... Aren't you, though? <laughs> ...that every one of Bretty Snellis' book-to-movie adaptations are... By far, some of the least faithful adaptations of any book to movie I've ever seen. Rules of Attraction, Less Than Zero, and American Psycho are completely unfaithful to the faith, like to the to the material. Like it completely misses the point. American Psycho is a great movie, but it misses the point. And the best thing about it is Christian Bale's portrayal of Patrick Bateman, because now every time I read that book, I only can picture Christian Bale as being Patrick Bateman because he did such a good job. But there's some huge aspects of that film that are completely incorrect as to the theming of the actual book and it doesn't get nearly as gross and gory which is really what I want. I also want the, the, the <laughs> 10 page like you know breakdown of why uh, Hip to be Square is, is a really good song which you're not going to get in the movie so But the guy behind was it, what was the previous one? Sorry <laughs> he's not actually looking at me. And he's not actually looking at me but the guy behind him is Oh, fuck yeah. Ryan cranes his neck some, looking toward me with that big old grin. His to- his long tongue hangs out the side of his maw. Oh, hey. Chase, come here. Don't do it. <laughs> I've never been beckoned by a guy currently balls deep inside someone else, so I'm pretty hesitant to obey. Yeah, get with it, Chase. Gosh, get on the level. <laughs> Flynn turns away from the duo, facing me. His expression sort of reminds me of how he got when his aunt was talking to him in City Hall. His eyes are a little more open than usual, and his jowls are pulled back along the side of his snout to to show his teeth. So, you showed up. Flynn limply gestures to his surroundings, right as Ryan and Buck's hard enough into Casey to elicit a loud moan. Casey curls his their feet against Ryan's own, the only clothing still on their body being striped, thigh-high, <laughs> fabric tights of some sort. Ray, Ryan, my, meanwhile, is still fully clothed, aside from his red prick sticking out of his fly and into Casey. <laughs> no, we got that. We figured. A small crowd has gathered at the left side of the room around something. I can't make out what, but there's some, there's more moaning in that direction as well. I think you can imply. Flynn's attention seems solely on me, despite everything happening around him. He's waiting on me to say something. I step forward, letting go of my tail. 
Mm. I can't tell. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it's like a hint of like, like it feels like Leo and Carl are there. In fact, the, the round chase looks like Leo, Carl, and uh, Jenna. I don't think that it's implied. No. I don't think they're implying that it's literally those people were supposed to be in that scene at some point and it got rewritten or anything, but just that like, I'm like, it feels odd that he's surrounded by a group of people that particularly look like the people he knows. I mean, I definitely do see the Carl. I really do think that's supposed to be uh, Casey and um, Ryan, though, next to him. Because that's, that's how it was described when he walks in. He literally says, like, Ryan's next on his left. Yeah, that could be Casey and Ryan. They said that Casey's behind Flynn. They, they said that Ryan's behind Flynn in the, the, the dialogue, but who knows. Oh. Well, you know. The art doesn't always, always, always match. It's still beautiful. It's still beautiful fucking art, you know. <laughs> We're all proud of you. We're very all, proud of you. Yeah, yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> your your art your art uh, teacher back in uh, middle school is really proud of what you've done with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Casey grabs Flynn's shirt, nearly yanking him over. You now. Flynn blinks, turning to speak briefly to the Fennec. Just give me a minute. Oh no! Shoot! Oh, they were like you now. Like like I'm picking <laughs> you. Like, like your turn. I thought it was like you again. You now. <laughs> dot dot dot. You so, now. So specific reference. <laughs> this is what the what's what the quote unquote villain of Fallout Three says when he p sees you at the end. The opening lines is you again, <laughs> <laughs> which is just weird because you're like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> this game, that game barely has like a main narrative. But also, so like, like the, I've been off doing side quests for like five fucking like yeah. years and so I don't remember what like, I was doing here like unlike Benny from New Vegas who's so memorable even though he's not really the main villain he's just like the first bad the first antagonist you meet well the he's checkered so, suit really helps yeah he's so recognizable and he has a personality and everything the guy in three you see him again you're like me again who, who are yeah, you wait, who you like look behind you're like you a, you're, you're like you're just like a generic dude that remembers me <laughs> Plus, uh, um, Benny was voiced by Matthew Perry, which I think is the funniest thing ever. Oh yeah, I love that fact. <laughs> <laughs> I just like he was a fan of he was a fan of Fallout, so they just asked him if he wanted to voice the guy, and he's like, okay, <laughs> how nice is that? Uh, wait, um, Chase, how you gonna do here? Okay, so in real life. What you're supposed to do is until cool. you leave is you play it cool. Yeah. Because you're in a room with people who are all down for this. And so if you're the one person that says, oh, this is yeah. fucked, they're all gonna, they might turn on you. It's not smart. You're kink shaming. You're kink shaming. Go, fuck off. <laughs> you just, you play you're it so cool. Many, you've had so many chances, including all the way back at Flynn's living room, to realize not to go further. And you keep going further. That it's kind of like, fuck off, Chase. Jesus Christ. You're going to freak out now. So anyway, we're gonna freak out now. <laughs> okay, yeah, freak out now because that's the one. That's the one I wouldn't pick. So that's do the one that, that one. feels like the bad ending. Yeah, so do the one that's the bad one. And... I, although I guess we don't ever do the bad ending first. Don't we? Who usually... knows? Oh, uh, do we? No, I thought we usually do the bad ending. We first. got we died first in Carl's route, but in every other ending ever, we've always done. We've actually exclusively picked choices based on what we thought was the right move, and we've always been right. So we've always gotten yeah, the good ending and then had yeah. to intentionally go back for the bad ending. Uh, but neither of us like Chase right now. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I kind of... Both of us have turned on Chase so bad. I want and... him to have some, like, uh, breakdown over this. Because he deserves... He's expo he exposed yeah. himself to this. And to some extent, I kind of feel like... I don't know if this makes any sense, but it would be kind of interesting to, like, end the playthrough on a good ending instead of a bad one. But I don't know. But really, I just, in my heart of hearts, I just feel that hearts. Chase would freak out right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's, he got this far while being freaked out the whole time, and he keeps going deeper while being freaked out the whole time, and I'm like, Chase, how do you not know what's happening here? How do you not know what any of this is? How are you not, you went to college, Chase. <laughs> he's He's been wrong this long, he might as well be wrong again. Yeah. I push my I push my paws into my pockets. God, how the hell did I go from watching old sci-fi shows with Carl and Daxton to this? Uh, um, uh, sorry, wrong door. I turn, quickly trying to figure 
the weird twisty door handle to get out of here. I hear the rustling of fabric and the jingling of a loose belt. A hand grasps my shoulder, and judging from the orange and black pattern, it's Flynn. You can't keep your nose in your own business, you know that? <laughs> yes. Despite the words, he sounds... worried? I clear my throat, trying not to sound too freaked out. Well, you know me. Snoopy journalist. Don't worry, this isn't, uh, going in the report. Dude, you're not even a journalist. You're just Snoopy. Don't ever call yourself a journalist again. Yeah. You are not a journalist. <laughs> you, uh, uh, gonna leave me hanging over here with this and... Ryan rests his heavy chin on the cooing Casey's shoulder, giving Flynn and I puppy eyes even as he bounces Casey on his crotch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel kind of bad for Casey. It's like, oh, you're going to leave me alone with this? This one? <laughs> like, what does that mean for Casey? Poor Casey. I, I, I think it's, I don't think it's meant that way. Like, like, like you're, like, like he, it's a problem they has to deal with. I think they mean like, like you're like you're leaving it just just to me to wear this one out. Oh yeah, I need I need help tuckering out this kid because this 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 is a, that Casey Casey's like the horniest character in the whole game. You look like you got it covered. Yeah. Covered in what? Covered in what? Flynn <laughs> keeps his hand on me, though no longer as tight. So you did leave that phone out for me to find it, right? <laughs> I hope I hope the answer is not yes because I want Chase to feel so stupid. <laughs> Flynn rolls his head some as if debating speaking further. Finally, he looks back down at bound, bleh, back down to me. Didn't expect you to bring my fucking roommate. So well, that was awkward as shit. And now I gotta deal with the fallout of all this when I get home. Wait till we tell him we brought Carl too. <laughs> I. Uh, the, re the reoccurring thing... Yeah, Carl's also here. The reoccurring thing here with Chase's fuckery is that Flynn is a promiscuous person, but he does it all on the down low and just on a basic level understands the, de the decorum of the arrangement that he's doing with people and the context. Like, he just understands the social context of the sex that he's having. Yeah. Twice now. Twice Chase has fucked up and taken uh, and involved versions of like forms of intimacy with with Flynn and these private things and involved other people between Leo and Carl and Daxton like he keeps bringing other people in and that's like that seems to be like the clear theme here is him just is his inability to just respect what the scenario well, is Chase, Chase is being socially clumsy like he, he like sure you know Chase can look at this situation and say oh this is fucked up and that's fine, but the thing is, is that, in a way, Flynn is doing this, like, fairly responsibly. Like, he has he has his life, this is what he does, he doesn't have issue with this, and he, like, this is just a part of his life. Chase doesn't know how to handle anything like this, and so he keeps, like, tumbling his way through these social situations where he's, like, slightly judgmental, or slightly he gets his feelings tied into it. He's doing all this wrong. Meanwhile, Flynn's not not really being a. I mean, Flynn's being an asshole like he always is. Yeah. But at least he's consistent, and at least he 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 knows what he wants, and he's just doing his thing. We just keep tumbling into his life and messing up all his stuff. Yeah. With like, our own preconceptions and our own emotions and things like that. He's not asking us to be involved in any of this, really. Like no. we're just we, we kind even, of fucking up all this stuff. We even felt part of Chase judging Flynn or being <clears> jealous <throat> of Flynn when it was when like the Ryan and Casey stuff was happening in the in the booth. And it's like, you knew, like you know that that Flynn like gets around, and you guys aren't dating. Like this is like some weird Leo behavior from you, where you're like, you're acting, you're acting like it's weird that Flynn's involved with other people when you guys aren't even a thing. And the one the one chance you had with him, you like actively fucked up because you can't move move on from Leo. So you just want, like between that the two of them and TJ, it's like Chase just kind of wants to own everyone and not cut things off and just kind of have the part that benefits him of each relationship without actually being accountable for any of it. It kind of reminds me of like 
like like polyamory where it's just like some people have their ducks in a row and they just kind of they know how to handle the situation yeah. but then they like if you involve someone ac- the hard part is like vetting people because if you involve someone accidentally who's just like not down for this who does get jealous who does get possessive they they you just have to kind of kick them out because they're gonna fuck everything up like i just don't think chase knows uh he doesn't have enough context to know what he's signing up for by being involved in, in with Flynn and his shenanigans. I think Flynn should just should just, you know, drop Chase off at the kitty table and go back to doing yeah. what he was doing. The lesson at the end of every Echo playthrough is get rid of Chase. Just get rid of him. <laughs> just, just not he can't he can't deal. You brought his roommate. Like he, you like Flynn could Why not did live. You bring his roommate? Flynn could never be in a relationship with Chase because Flynn will never be able to continue doing what he's doing with the way that Chase just exists in the yeah. same way that Chase would do horribly in a polyamorous relationship or like honestly like, I don't know Chase should just be by himself because almost every round is him accidentally opting into a semi-polyamorous relationship because he just cannot cut things off with Leo correctly like it's, it's just it's just so frustrating <laughs> but I just I cannot I just can't accept the brain of like I just I, I, I cannot get in the headspace of why he would bring everyone. I'm so, I can't, I can't process it. I cannot, it's just, it's not good. <laughs> well, I, I think he was like, oh, like Flynn wants us to save him. So we have to all go save him together. No. He has to save him from the thing he went to on purpose. Yeah, he went to consensually with a person yeah. whose name is in his contact list. He's also, I think, just the oldest person in this entire group by like a, a fair margin. Like, I think he's, like, three or four years older than Carl. Yeah, but they all went to the same high school together. Yeah. I feel like they'd only go to high school for one year together, if that was the case. And that's not even true, because TJ's the youngest, so how would he be going to the same high school as Flynn? I don't know if TJ and Flynn went to the same school at the same time. We do need, like, we do need, like, an age list. Yeah. This gives us every time. We're always like, how old is everybody? Yeah, somebody sent me a chart, but then it, then I think some people disputed it a bit, but I think that, like, I think what it said was that in Route 65, Ch- uh, Chase and Carl are 14, and, and TJ is 13, and Flynn is 18, and Leo's 17. It's so, like there's a fair bit of age so like gaps in general. Seventeen year olds hanging out with the thirteen year old. It's yeah. fucking kind of weird. Just it's because the, the developmental just just, differences between the people of those ages is very. I think it's because there's just not enough people. There's just not that many people in general. No wonder they all hate each other. Yeah. Let's see. Here's the picture. So like. Oh yeah. So 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 Leo was sixteen and TJ was twelve. And Flynn's 18. So Flynn's six years older than TJ. Leo's three years older than... It feels like a test just to, like, fuck with your idea of, like, what is your... what? Do you, how do you feel about age differences? Because, like, oh, Leo moved on from a three-year age gap with uh, Micah to a two-year age gap with Chase. <laughs> it's like, you're wondering, like, where's the margin where it is acceptable or not? Well, it's, so it's, Je- it's really, and it's, yeah. And it's noticeable why Jen, Jenna's, it's, so Jenna just is from the older half of the group. Like, there is a, there is an age gap going on throughout the whole thing. And that's why there's, like, this, this such a dynamic from person to person throughout this. There's a lot going on here. So I don't know what the source is on each just individual says, thing. Daxon just is in his 20s, is, is all it says. And yeah. Brian's just in his 40s. People that are just never specified. I always wonder which, in some of these cases, I do wonder, like, which ones are, like, specifically cited somewhere, or if someone's kind of guessing, essentially. I just noticed that in the Arches art, they used Arches art of Devin and and uh, Arturo, but, but Cameron's face on the far right is the one from the end of the Echo route that we saw. <laughs> so it's different art style. <laughs> Some goofiness. Yeah, that's like 10 years later, so everyone... So Brian and Duke are even older. But I don't know, it's a lot to parse. Yeah, it's an odd spread, honestly. Like like I said, I can't imagine the scenario 
in which a, like a 17 year old would want to hang out with a 13 year old in yeah like i mean unless, like unless they're like family or something you know what i mean like usually because when i don't know when you're like a teenager you're kind of like in your own headspace and you're just good like a 17 year old should hypothetically be a lot more mature than, than a 13 year old like if you like even as an yeah. adult if i look at like which is which is how it's shown in the thing like in route 65 we see like like leo's like seemingly like dealing and, and like doing shit in this like creepy uh like abandoned place and like being involved with this party and like tj is an idiot clown ghost <laughs> that's good it's a halloween party that, like walk, my mom like, dropped me off like clearly walks into something in the wrong age dynamic and gets his ass beat but like, if, but with him it's even worse because he just i think he, he kind of is that person anyway so i feel like like it adds to not only is he actually just like a little kid he also is so sheltered he doesn't know anything he has a double whammy but of, he's studied otter anatomy he d- he did. <laughs> I think TJ has matured a lot. Yeah. In, the, in Echo, the game, compared to any of the flashbacks or side stories or Route 65. Like, I think he is basically like a fully formed adult who is mature and everything and has his whole life going on. While also maybe being ace or demi or something and kind of like sort of socially oblivious with like sexual cues to an extent. But like... He's like got his shit figured out more at that point, and that I think the and that like the lesson, part of the lesson in his own route is that he's infantilized by the people around him because they still see him as like the idiot ghost kid when like he's a college student, like and he's like going, he's like he has a career planned out and everything. I mean, to be fair, he did tell us not to cuss. <laughs> If we first met him, which made me mad. Yeah, but that's just a type of person. That's I know. Just, there's just that's, people I like don't, that. No, no, no. I know. I just yeah. <laughs> I know, but it's just people who are like that, uh, and it gets old. The uh, I yeah, can only this, not curse for so long. It, it no, takes I think, the effort. I think this group of people are together just because, like, I think it is like a very different social context where it's just like that's a very small town, and it's like the limited number of people that you can deal with, and each of them are dealing with the social isolation of certain types of people, cutting them off or judging them, and so on, like. How Jenna had that friction with Heather and all those other people, and then, and then there's the, the the series of queer characters that are uh, actively dis- discriminated against and can't interact with certain types of groups. So you kind of just fall in with the people you do. But given yeah. that, given that, whenever we see a portrait of the past, they're not exactly like they're not exactly like the fucking like rocket power team all hanging out <laughs> together every day as a big unified group, and they're all good friends and so on. It's like I don't know, like in our in our in our blast of the past, like they're doing. Like, Leo's at an event without inviting anybody, and they're jealous, and, like, Flynn is, like, fucked off, like, getting groceries and on a different planet. And, like, <laughs> like they, I think they all bounce in and out of each other's experiences constantly, and they're just kind of the people in each other's lives, akin to, like, how Jenna and Leo and Chase have that history of, like, like how, like, like how Leo hangs out with Jenna and Chase, despite Chase's age difference, because they were just, like, the people who like put up with him and yeah. would, and had the patience for him and, and like let him hang around while he didn't even speak English yet and then he like learned with them and like they just kind of were hanging out and then you kind of just expand slightly from there like okay so like like uh Carl's one year younger than Chase and then TJ's one year younger than Carl and Flynn is one year older than Leo and that's just like then it's then it's it's never been a friend group that seemed like it was equal opportunity <laughs> like there was not there, it's, it's always been yeah. like oh that's your friend's friend and that other like weird i guess it's like the equivalent of thing. like living in a cul-de-sac yeah and just having the immediate people there i don't know it's just i don't know and out of all of them like we've had the least evidence of flynn and tj ever liking each other <laughs> that is true like it's like and i don't think it's just because of the post uh Sydney trauma of like them hating each other. I think, I mean, I think it's Flynn mostly holding uh, that against him. I think they personality differences. Yeah, I think there's already little evidence that they were interacting anyway. So it's just, it's a complicated thing. It's com- it's a complicated in a fairly reasonable, like realistic way. Where like I think real friend groups are often like this too, where it's like you want to think that everyone's just friends with each other, but certain groups of people are kind of just like the friends of specific people and are there. Like, because that other person's there, and, like, there's, like, these, like, sort of, like, interpersonal grudges within the larger friend group, the larger it gets, where there's certain people that just kind of don't really want to put up with other people in the group, but they are there for the other people, and you just kind of, like, play nice with some of the people that you don't like as much. It's just, 
Once you have like six people, I think that's already like a difficult thing for it for there to be the like platonic ideal of the Power Rangers all being best buddies and all that, and the, and like none of them is the weird weak link or or kind of outlier that's only there because they're just best friends with the Green Ranger and he always brings them around. <laughs> Is that how the Power Rangers worked? No, they were all friends. That's I know, I'm just, like, I'm just not, they're not people, they're not characters. They're all, they're just like templates. Yeah, It's yeah. amazing how little character they have. But like once they once you make them characters, you're like, oh right, yeah, this isn't... Once you get to real social dynamics, you, re, the, you, get, you get those kinds of things that happen. I, like, kudos to you if you're in a friend group of like six plus people and like, everyone has an equally strong bond would all be there to ride or die for each other and so on because like i don't know how much that honestly ever happens no i forget what the name of it is but there's like that whole uh i feel like everyone's heard of it but the, the, that whole concept where like um well two things one is like the concept that every other person has more friends than you but I, there's like a mathematical equation that explains like why that seems like a paradox but it's not blah 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 but there's also like that whole thing where it's like you also have a certain number of friends that's ideal and if you go over a certain amount you're not getting anything more out of it it's actually causing you more stress and if you have too little it's obviously bad also but there's generally like like a golden rule statistically on how many friends you should have and obviously that like statistics don't account for real life but generally like having about like five close friends is like ideal like not including like family necessarily uh, and like acquaintances and co-workers and things but, like, I feel like I prefer to have those people spaced out. Like, I don't like them all being together. In the same place. I like having individual friendships with people. Because you get to be, like, you kind of get to be a different part of yourself with each person and so on. I was thinking about planning, like, a party for my 30th, but it occurred to me that I would not enjoy having all my friends in the same room together. Because most <laughs> of them don't know each other at all. <laughs> like, they're yeah. all separate people, you know? Like, uh... Today I'm going out with a coworker to celebrate her birthday, but it's like that person has no clue who any of you are in this house, and you guys don't know who she is, and like she doesn't know who, uh, like my other friend is, and they don't know who my like. There's just one of those things where it's like I don't like to mix that together. You, they would all show up, they'd look at each other, and be like, I don't know a single person here, but I would know everybody, yeah. and that would only be fun for me. Not really, because I'd have to like try to buffer everyone's personalities, and that would be too much work for me to do. <laughs> oh, it's it can be a lot. I could have six friends, but not all together. <laughs> They'd have to all be separate. They have to make appointments with me one at a time. All equidistantly separated, like spokes on a wheel. <laughs> one, maybe one or two. That is it. Oh, my controller turned off because we were so off topic. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I did it. <laughs> you did. This is my fault. I mean, leave a comment in the web zone on the bottom of the place about the complex social dynamics of this fucking nightmare friend group and also how they, you relate to them in your real life because actually it's just, besides the, the constant stakes, this is mostly pretty realistic. Everyone put in the comments how many friends you have and cause uh, havoc by uh, sharing how little or how many friends you think is the right number. <laughs> you can take a guess and you, you'll be like, you'll be like three is almost like i have eight friends and you guys can fight about it <laughs> like, like aside from all the ghost murder this is mostly pretty realistic social dynamics <laughs> yeah but not social dynamics that i would i would involve myself in yeah i would dip none of these people would be my very close friends <laughs> you're the one that accused him of watching you masturbate after making out in front of us i'm pretty fucking sure he did or at least someone was. Uh, what? What does that mean? What, what? What ambiguous other person can there be? He doesn't seem like the kind of person to do that. And I would know. I met him today. I know. <laughs> and he never struck me as the sort of person who would be dumb enough to bring him along when I tried to make it damn clear I just wanted you. You really didn't, though, Flynn. I blink. Wanted me? <gasps> oh. <laughs> He ushers me back against one of the walls near the entrance. Looking around, I notice that the clientele seems to mainly fall within two groups. Fennec natives and middle-aged men. Most of them look like generic dads, which makes Flynn's presence here all the more strange. What the hell even is this place, Flynn? I feel the Gila's weight 
shift against me as he shrugs. Tits if I know. It's fucking something though, ain't it? It's, you know. Good sentence, Flynn. Very articulate. More exciting than, <laughs> than the diner, like totally. for the 18th time, I guess. <laughs> he looks at me, seeming to <laughs> beat scrambled eggs. <laughs> Gonna get his eggs scrambled. <laughs> He looks at me, seeming to, to be judging the expression on my face. A fucking sleazy dump. There's a flicker of a smile on Flynn's face before the lights come back on. It's laden with a tinge of nervousness. With everything illuminated, I can finally see what the small crowd is all gathered around. There's an actual tiger in the middle. An actual tiger. An actual tiger. <laughs> I don't know what to make of the phrasing there. Like, I guess, like, they're rare around these parts. Maybe. <laughs> the guy must weigh 300 pounds. On his paws and knees in front of him is a rather chubby fennec, large for his species as well. There's a jar of lard next to them, and the tiger's paw is... Oh. 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 Oh! Oh! Follow up on our jar of lube, conver lube conversation from Ad Astra, and then why you would ever have a container that opens from the top. <laughs> but it, but it's lard this time. I, which I guess has to open any from ship, the top. Any ship, any dock in a storm. <laughs> <laughs> any, any dock in this place, you know what I'm saying? Docking. But I, I feel like okay, so usually lard comes in like a tub, and you like pull off the top, like it's like it's like a one of those like popcorn buckets or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's reaching up in there to feel his heartbeat, like he's Neo reviving Trinity in the Third Matrix movie. Oh my god! <laughs> well, is he a doctor? <laughs> I'm a doctor. There's literally someone getting <laughs> fisted over there, Flynn. <laughs> I mean, to Charlie's their own. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, Charlie's their own. She's probably done that. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, well, she, she's gonna come after you. No, man. no. I heard she's mean in real life. <laughs> she's gonna come fight you. <laughs> I do not have opinions about Charlie's their own. Yep, I know. I was gonna comment on it with you and your fragile mental state and whatnot. I wasn't gonna distract you with the with the tiger fisting situation being over a, there because a we were talking. Baby, how many stripes deep do you think you can get? <laughs> think he writes like a grade on each one, like C, like D, C, B, A. <laughs> like, are you trying to get to an A to get a prize if you get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is. It's just a whole subgenre of uh, of like how d how deep on this can you get, and it's like there's a there's a score. And, oh my god! A plus and then S and then S and so on. <laughs> Usually S is the knot. Let's see, fragile mental state. He sniffs, staring ahead while looking tight lipped. Chase, you are the person who ambushed TJ with porn when he was trying to figure himself out, and you're gonna act you're gonna act like a coward now. That you just walked into a, a just a, a sexual context room that you opted into, and nobody's even like involving you. <laughs> like, See, they're they're making you feel like how you made TJ feel back yeah, then. It's just <laughs> as a, in a way, it's like karma, I guess. Yeah, a way. little bit. All it took was the fisting like, tiger. You want to figure out if the you're, fisting if you're tiger gay or of, not? Of you're karma. the with gay porn, huh? huh? I'm, I'm being. I'm, I'm, now I'm gonna go back to blowing my boyfriend on the. Yeah, phone. like I'm really not taking this very seriously. Like I'm yeah. really preoccupied right now, even though you're going through something very important and serious, huh? <laughs> he sniffs, staring ahead while looking tight-lipped. How'd you even find this place, Chase? You literally looked at the text message saying, "This is the address." That's how you got here. <laughs> like, well, you literally, you know that he got texted by Ryan saying, come to this address, which implies he didn't know the address before, which means that's how he found this place, Chase. You really... <laughs> well, I mean, Flint's been here before. Journalist. <laughs> like, I don't know why. See, like, he's, he's saying it right now, but like, I don't know why Ryan sent him the address, because he... He's been here before. Yeah. I, well, uh, maybe, could, maybe he, it was an old text. He could be like you think me. He scrolled back to the original text just to lure Chase in. Maybe. Or it could be like me where I have to look up the address every single time I go anywhere and retype it into Google Maps <laughs> every single time. I have to search through text messages to find like my friend's yes, addresses. Exactly. So I can type them in again because I, I don't remember them and B don't remember how to get there. Yeah. So it could be like that. Ryan showed me a long time ago. 
It was so fucking gross. There was like four old ass beavers with balls <laughs> down to their knees rutting in the corner. Fuck yeah. And you came back? They were slapping Oi! <laughs> Oi! I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Oi! I can't, I can't start a sentence with Oi, it's impossible. Oi! <laughs> this ain't fucking ritzy ass Puebla where there's 12 gay bars within 10 miles equipped with cheap beer and a blowjob dispenser. The, what the fuck's a blowjob dispenser? <laughs> I th where do, do we a, get do these? Do you mean a glory hole, Flynn? <laughs> Did you put a quarter in? You Did you think it was coin operated? You can't dispense a blowjob like a blowjob dispenser. <laughs> Flynn, you can't call people that. <laughs> <laughs> You get bored. I mean, this this makes sense to me. Like, yeah. I mean, even I might end up here <laughs> if, like, I lived in fucking Echo. There's, yeah. like, nothing going on, dude. And lonely. You'll watch those beavers fuck each other. <laughs> like, yeah. I have nothing else to do on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you can take bets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're slapping cheeks and slapping tail. <laughs> Getting that beaver. Flynn... <laughs> <laughs> I have that Primus hat with the beaver on it, and every once in a while someone's like, why is there a beaver on your hat? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit here and explain this. Flynn grunts and I feel his weight on my shoulder intensify some. So Ryan's your... friend? My voice comes across more curt than I meant. Flynn fidgets. The music gets loud for a moment so we don't speak. He's the friend that's not going to be leaving in three days, so he's the friend. What about Carl? He what about he, Carl? Well, he canceled on Ryan to hang out with Carl. That one time. I mean, it might have been more times. You don't know. But Flynn, uh, but Carl also... Wait, well, no, he didn't leave because that was after that. But maybe things just didn't work out. We don't know there. The I want them to work the, out. I mean, he's still, Can't I get what I want? He still brings him salmon. No, he's still serving it, Flynn fish. You never, you don't know what they're up to. <laughs> it wasn't salmon. And they're still it fishing was together. Is, was it bluegill? Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to get salmon out there. I just forget fish. <laughs> forget They all become fish. salmon. No. <laughs> I like I say salmon. Yeah. I guess, I mean... Do you pronounce the L in salmon chat? Fight. I say salmon. Enjoy your seventh yum, call yum, out yum, this yum, episode. Yum. Episode. <laughs> episode. <laughs> that's, salmon. That's not how I say that word. Salmon. <laughs> Aluminium. A pang hits deep inside my chest. I go quiet. I thought, fuck it. Might as well get all the baggage out and show you what I'm apparently all about and shit. You're all about CD sex clubs? Well, it's just... Can't exactly go telling anyone else in the group about this shit. Oh yeah, Jenna, I was out at a bar off the res and was fucking some of your people the other night. How are you doing? <laughs> the reservation. That is a whole other thing to unpack about this. That This is a reservation gay club where seemingly all of the employees that are doing sex work are all natives. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure how to unpack that element, honestly. That's a whole thing I'm not equipped to talk about. Yeah. There's like, yeah. There's a few different angles you can take on that, but I, I'm not going to touch it. I frown, coughing a bit from the some passing smoke. <laughs> That's so delicate. The, the people smoking inside and the lack of adequate ventilation are making my eyes water. God, she's already furious at you. TJ, do you know what sounding is? Because me and that this bull guy did it last week, and he had a cross necklace. Reminded me of you. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself cracking a half smile at the hypothetical conversation, even if the other half of my face is still in a grimace. Ugh. No way. You don't actually do that, do you? Che. Chase. <laughs> Chase. Holy shit, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Chase, quit 
Quit king shaming <laughs> Why people. Why are you like this? How do you not clocking this in? Like, I did pick the the freak out option, so I guess this. I don't know if the scene plays out differently if you're cool, if you play it cool. But I mean, just like Chase, you are the most boring gay person I've ever met. Um. I was gonna. Mm. The large Gila harumphs. I was gonna make a comment on sounding because I know someone who likes to do that, but it's one of those things where like his his girlfriend's just afraid of hurting him all the time. Yeah. But one thing I thought was kind of interesting is, uh, like he bought himself uh, a snake probing kit because a snake probing kit is like a set of um little and i have one because i keep snakes but it's for it's like for sexing a snake so you can figure out if it's a male or a female because you you stick it in their in their in their slit to see how far deep it goes to find out if they're a male or a female basically you're looking for their hemi hemipenes which is like it's kind of some flynn anatomy there where you're like you're poking inside there to try to find a little 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 penis in there but it's like a set of 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 long bars and depending on the size of the snake they, they go up in size so if you were like to try to sex like a giant anaconda, you would need like a really fat. They look like Allen wrenches in a way, but for poking up like the <laughs> the cloaca of reptiles. And apparently they make really good sounding tools. Hmm. So I just thought I'd share that with you all. <laughs> that random tidbit of information. Hey, anything that's said on this podcast is not uh, <clears throat> medical advice. And <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's definitely not medical advice. I can't vouch for it. I've never used it to sound any person. Um, yeah. And like I said, I would just I, I really respect penises and I'd be afraid to hurt one. Um, sex, but sex actually isn't real. And every drug that Toaster mentioned in the Archer's playthrough also was fictional. <laughs> there we yeah, go. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. But I just thought that was an interesting. If anyone out there has a snake sexing kit, I'm just saying you have options now. <laughs> <laughs> Just rocked someone's world. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just a, a snake probe kit is what you would type into Google if you were looking for one of those. <laughs> it's really hard to do this voice when I have a real laugh. I'm so sorry. I have to like, I'm so sorry. I have to like open I like up. just woke up and I'm drinking a coffee and I just I just went into that for you guys. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I did this to you, but I had to share it with someone. When is this ever gonna come up for me again? <laughs> I wasn't the one getting it in my dick, if that's what you're asking. I'm a lizard. We don't got big urethras. Hey, this is... that's very specific details. That's disgusting. Flynn chitters a bit to himself. He doesn't usually laugh at his own jokes, but his tone is actually a bit sheepish. So that's where my missing my missing handheld stylus went. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That's probably too big, honestly. I don't know. It, dude, well, it, it depends a lot. It does. It depends a lot on the on the dude. And what was he? Wasn't he a bull? He has a bull guy, so you know. You know, a whole Sharpie in there. <laughs> Nah, that was probably Carl. I used one of your parents' cantaloupes for getting off back in junior high, though. <laughs> Not my cantaloupes! <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. What? I always thought about, like, American Pie and, like, whether or not that makes any sense. I don't know how you get enough traction. For the pie? For the pie or for a cantaloupe. My problem with the pie specifically is I'm like... It's a flat. It's flat. You don't have a lot of room. It's not even that. It's like, I'm thinking, like... Like, a, a, a fruit that you put a hole in has, like, structural integrity. Yeah, the pie doesn't. A pie, like, will disintegrate. Yeah. <laughs> like, a pie doesn't... What are you doing with that? Ch Child me was very confused about the logistics of that. I was like, how did he get anything out of that? That was also, like, eight. Yeah. eight. Like, when that movie came out, so I was like, why is he doing that? Yeah. I just, like, for me, the, the thing that would worry me about fruit options, I'm like... I feel like there's several options that's probably got to be like something in the juice that you do not you want. A pineapple, in there. it's the enzymes start eating away at your dick because you know, like <laughs> enzymes they eat away at your mouth. Like some people are allergic yeah. to pineapple. <laughs> like, it's just like there's like it's gonna it's like it's like it's, 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 it's like the reason why you wouldn't use a lemon, <laughs> like that. <food. laughs> 
Like there's like <laughs> I don't know what the spectrum is between uh, fruits where you're gonna be fine and fruits where you're gonna start getting some really bad news if if juices get places. And I, I heard <laughs> banana peel was banana peel. A banana peel. A banana peel. Yeah, it's like a little sleeve. <laughs> Like, like I said, I have no, like, this is not... I feel like you have to compromise the integrity of that to get the banana out. Well, you'd have to, yeah, well, yeah, but you end up with, like, a, a flap, like... Like, it's, is it gonna be open <laughs> now? Just... <laughs> this episode's a lot. I so. don't have a penis attached to my body. I've never tried any of these <laughs> things. I can't vouch for any of them. <laughs> Doesn't take that much imagination. Oh, no, no, I, I can, I'll imagine it all day. <laughs> But <laughs> I'm just saying, I haven't tried any of these methods on myself because I do not have a dick attached to my body. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where Vanilla Ass Chase's like threshold is. Like, what is the last? What is the weirdest thing that he's unfazed by? Because it's got to be really boring. Because he's like, this is just like not the stuff he's walked in on and seen so far is just not much. I would just walk <laughs> in here and just be vibing. I'd be like, oh cool, yeah. like oh nice fun. Yeah. This only like this this only feels like a, a step higher than me. Like when I went to Beta Breakers, it's just like people in like costumes and they paint their dicks and stuff and they're jumping around. That just there's there's people at Beta Breakers that like they have no clothes and they're wearing body paint and they made it they they did something funny costume wise with their dick with the body paint and they definitely it's took, an elephant. they definitely <laughs> took Viagra and oh, they're yeah. just and now they're just going. <laughs> Dude, I I've been to the Folsom Street Fair. <laughs> Like, yeah. G g like this is fine. This this yeah, here, this that's, smoke that's, room that's is the, fine. That's the kind of place where you will like walk down the street and there will be a bunch of guys sitting in like a inflatable pool full of piss. Yeah, or they'll ask you and to kick them a, in the nuts. And there's a sign at inviting you to add to it. Which yeah, I'm just like among among several other things, I'm just like it's just tepid cold urine <laughs> like that just seems yeah you're in san francisco so... like the, the folsom street fair is in san francisco so it's like it's fucking cold so that yeah. is definitely cold which it's is why, like why, why, like, if why just, they like, want you to add more <laughs> just makes me think that like if i if i try to manifest <clears throat> like and if i try to manifest an interest in that topic i'm like surely that can't be great anymore after a few minutes <laughs> yeah i don't yeah. i don't know man the, uh, but Chase isn't even remotely ready for Folsom Street Fair. <laughs> no, can't no. even handle the smoke room where people are just having regular sex so far, <laughs> for the most part. Uh, if you can't walk around, people. I'm just really amused by Flynn just volunteering the cantaloupe story, though, because it means like cards are on the table now. So he's just like he's in just honesty mode. So well, he's just like, oh he, fuck he, it, whatever. He's being shameless, which like, I think is yeah. kind of fun. It's like what am I like? What is this going to be the line now? What are, you, are you struggling reconciling the fact that an adult is a sexual creature, Chase? We know what you got up to. <laughs> well, like I said, Chase, Chase, you know, Chase has only been with Leo, except yeah. for him fucking Flynn now in this playthrough. So he's kind of a, he's kind of a little noob little baby. He's a little baby. Just <laughs> don't remember if I oh, threw it no. away or not. <laughs> I really hope that Chase's mom would have thrown it away because there's a hole in it. Every single line of this chapter is so fucking entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Flynn. What a... <laughs> Why Chase, though? <laughs> Again, Flynn fidgets. I can't say I've ever seen Flynn so damn antsy. I'm aghast. I'm sure whether he's being serious or not, though I might as well counter him. Uh-huh. You sure it wasn't one of the cucumbers? I feel like those are difficult to mix up. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, that, that wasn't that good of a comeback, Chase. No, and cucumbers and cantaloupes imply different uses. Yeah. Nah, they weren't big enough for me. He wants one of those, like, acorn squashes. No, no not an acorn squash, that's the wrong shape. I was thinking of the, the big, like... Uh, the one that people make spaghetti out of. <laughs> like squash spaghetti. I'm squash sorry. Sp spaghetti. A spaghetti squash. A spaghetti squash. That's what he wants. Sorry. <laughs> they're they're very big. <laughs> to my surprise, he reaches down and grabs my wrist. Look, you obviously ain't warm into the scene back here. That's an understatement. So if we're gonna have a talk, 
And I ain't pushing you one way or the other for this shit. Let's do it outside. I'm not sure what he means by talk. In fact, I doubt he's even sure what he means by talk. Still, sounds like a better idea than staying back here. I mean, that's what I'm here for, right? To talk to Flynn? Right. Sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying Sorry. to maneuver a, a stool. He's give, me, give me a foot rest, he's being nice. I usually, I usually move it there in advance, but I forgot. I'm too lanky. That's what we're here. For. That's what I'm here for, right? To talk to Flynn. Right. All right, man. All right, man. I'm okay, but that sounds fine. Flynn gives me a dubious expression. I feel him squeeze my shoulder. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. So, my microphone fell <laughs> off the table. <laughs> like, it's, it's very mysteriously. Which is, yeah, well, it's a... Uh, <laughs> this is just, we just <laughs> we're getting derailed by real life now. Like, it won't stop. The, uh... <laughs> what an episode. The, uh... So, I'm, I, to be clear, I'm not using a, a microphone stand. Like, it's not a normal, like, oh, it's, it fell, fell over. It's like, it's a... Uh, it's an it's a boom arm or whatever. It it's a microphone the table. arm that's clamped to the table, so it physically like <clears throat> fell off the table at the clamp level, and so like the clamp fell backwards off the side of the uh, desk, and then the microphone disconnected and fell forward, and then landed on the the Y splitter for our headphones and yanked both of our headphones off, and it was just a, a whole thing. So that took some cleanup. We're back. <laughs> Hello. That's a first. <laughs> you just hear us go, ah! Yeah, it's gotta check your connections periodically, so that in case they're loosening, I guess. That's, that would have sounded horrible. I hopefully added most of it out. <laughs> Alright, man. I'm okay. Well, that sounds fine. Well, it gives me a dubious expression. I feel him squeeze my shoulder some. <laughs> Where are you two going? Ryan calls out from across the room mid-thrust into Casey's behind. <laughs> a few people actually turn their heads, looking at us. Flynn hesitates for a moment before grunting and shouting back. We're gonna go shit in each other's mouths! I blink. <laughs> Flynn tugs on my shoulder and we hastily leave the smoke room. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's just left there to think about that. Yeah. And you're, and you're leaving me? <laughs> I'm not invited? <laughs> no. That, see, there's my limit. That's where I'm like, uh, oh, yeah, uh no, alarmed, yeah, alarmed, no, yeah, <laughs> alarmed. Me too, me too. Me too. <laughs> but everything else, Chase just being a little, ba little baby. To each their own, little baby. their own, as long as you're not hurting anybody. But I do have do personal Do not say limits. that Charlize Theron does that. I don't. We're gonna get sued. Dude, like I said, I heard she's really mean. 